intro for this introduction. Yeah, welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, to be with you today and to share the presentation, which was originally designed for the scale up conference in a process development conference to be held in, in Cambridge next week. So ask me if I could uh, go with this, uh, with this web to do this as a webinar. And I, I, I was pleased to agree. And uh, so uh, for, there may be some some information which uh, will show that that is not just for, for DinoCam users. It is a, a general uh, process development talk. And uh, I would like to uh, start with a presentation about the, the fundamental problem of scale up. And uh, uh, as you will agree, the major objective of process development is the design of a sequence of operations which allow the safe and ecological responsible manufacturing. Okay, this is for pharmaceutical industry, of course, to make active pharmaceutical ingredients at a scale demanded by market, in a quality demanded by regulatory authorities, and at the lowest achievable cost. So I'm, I'm sure there is a lot to, to, to say about this. And uh, there is no time to go into the details of what means safe and ecologically responsible. And uh, quality demanded by regular authorities is something like the, the rules of the games. So we, we cannot uh, have a, a lot of discussion about this. We have to do this. And OK, lowest achievable cost, OK, it's fundamentally clear. We want to make some money. But uh, what I want to uh, lose a second is scale demanded by market. This implies that process development does not finish by handing over something from the, the development to the manufacturing and that's it. So process development is a, 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 a process which will be active in the, the full lifetime of, of, in this case, of, of a drug. So that means when we will have uh, what we all are hoping for, uh, demanding that the scale will increase in future so that uh, maybe the, the scale at launch will be uh, in, in a couple of years will be a multiple and at, at later time then it's, it's a fundamental question can we do this uh, in a larger equipment or do we have to do multiple uh, runs from the same medium size equipment because the cost Per dollar per uh, dollar per kilo, that is going down when the equipment can be as large as possible. And I think you all agree that that will roughly describe what is the, the one of the major objectives. And the important point to, is now that all the development process is based on lab scale experiments. So uh, the situation now is. We are doing experiments in something like this. OK, the, the, today's uh, lab reactors will look a little different. They are more sophisticated. You have automated temperature control. You have uh, computer control. You can record a lot of data. You can use color, colorimeters and so on. But actually, what we want is we want to design a process we run on, which will be running on equipment looking like this. So uh, how can we go from here to there? And there are traditional approaches which uses the lab to design the experiments, to design the uh, reaction. So uh, we do experiments to find out what is the best temperature, what is, do we need to charge A to B or B to A, uh, what is the best concentration with respect to yield, to respect to side products, and so on. And uh, once we have crystallized uh, a good design, or at least what we look like is good in the lab, then we do something like uh, or what we call robustness testing. There we will find out the sensitivity of the, uh, the parameters. For example, is a change in temperature a little too high, a little too low, change of concentration a little too high, a little too low, what is the impact on the uh, on the outcome? So how does it affect uh, the yields of the desired product? What is the uh, 
the, the site products coming out. And finally, last but not least, you also do a process safety testing set. So we are not only interested on the fate of material, we are also interested on the fate of energy. So uh, we want to know when we have exotherm reaction, what happens with this energy in the case of a normal operation or in the case of some malfunction, for example, loss of cooling capacity. And if all these tests uh, go well and we say, okay, that might be a good process, then we run it on scale and nevertheless, there will be a risk of failure. And uh, the problem is that this approach underestimates the effects of physical rates on the overall performance. Physical rates are part of process development. We have rate of heat transfer. We have various rates of mass transfer, for example, solid liquid, 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 gas liquid. And we also will have rates of mixing, which becomes important when the chemistry is uh, fast. So it approaches the time scale of, of mixing. And the fundamental problem is that all these physical rates are a function of scale and equipment. So that is the dilemma. Process development needs to consider scale and equipment. But to all agree, we cannot do trial and error experiments on large scale equipment to find out a good process. However, we need the information. So what to do? And the answer is process modeling. Process modeling allows the prediction of the interactions of chemical and physical rates as a function of operating conditions, scale and equipment. So that is exactly what we want. We, we want to know when we charge 500 kilos in this equipment and we add something within the two hours, what will be the outcome of our process? So we need a different approach. The lab design approach may become substituted by a model-based approach. Here, the lab experiments have a completely different uh, target. We do not want to design the good process in the lab. We do the lab experiments to generate information of our process. And this information, the collection of this information, what we will need to do is process understanding. And this process understanding then somehow needs to be captured by models. And once we are able to do this, then with these models, we can, together with the equipment data, of course, the physical properties, the, the uh, physical dimensions, and uh, large-scale physical rate constants, heat transfer, mass transfer, and these things, then we are able to design the process as it will be run on the real equipment. And what the outcome is, is a predicted performance. This green part, however, will work on a computer. So, it's a completely different way to uh, the traditional development. And this is a problem. This gives some uh, change in mindset. And uh, it is hard to, to accept for, for, for chemists, for example, who want to do the right experiments in the lab to design the process to understand that they have to do experiments which are definitely not good for uh, for a process for the for the good yield so if if you tell a chemist okay do an experiment and under these conditions and they say okay yes but i can predict that will give 20 percent of the side product whereas i suggest to do it in this way which will give one uh, percent then i would say yeah but the 20 percent side product that will give much better information of the side product kinetics of the reaction. So we have to do it. So that is a hurdle. 
And uh, but doing this is the purpose of this is doing getting process understanding, and this process understanding then may be captured by first principles mechanistic models. So we have two items here. I would like to uh, spend a little more time. The first is process understanding. What is it? How can we approach it? And the next is first principles mechanistic models. So you know all that uh, DinoChem is a system which exactly can do this. It can capture process understanding in a model and it can do it by first principle mechanistic models. And uh, so Pfizer has been using this for some time. 